and welcome back to episode seven of Hoop HR Highlights. I'm Louisa Gale, the HR and Office Manager here at Hoop. And today we are joined by a very special guest, Sophie Morris, who is the CEO and founder of STM Consultancy and Business Psychologist. Sophie boasts an impressive track record spanning over 10 years in people operations and recruitment with notable roles such as learning and development business partner at Reed and international learning and development manager at James Cannes venture capital firm, Recruitment Entrepreneur. It's been my privilege to collaborate with Sophie for the past six months as she is currently working as our people operations consultant here at Hoop. So welcome, so Welcome to Hoop HR Highlights. How are you today? I'm very good. The good. sun is now shining <laughs> and that feels good. good. I'm here and you've just given a very kind introduction. So thank you. Absolutely. No, we're really happy to have you with us. So I thought we would start just by talking about some of the projects that we've been working on together and mm-hmm. um, more so about the onboarding. So I yeah. thought if you could just start by giving us like a little overview of what onboarding is absolutely and I think onboarding is a funny word because some people would call something onboarding Mm -hmm. some people would call something similar induction Mm -hmm. because yeah it's the part where you bring on someone new yeah and so the onboarding bit is when you've gone through a hiring journey, you've done your pre-boarding bit where you start to make people feel welcome, you've maybe invited them on you know, some kind of social mm-hmm. events, into the office, that sort of thing. You've kept them warm so that yep. they actually make it through the door on day one and they want to be here. And then the onboarding bit is what does that look like? How are they set up for success? Yep. What do they understand is the first week structure, like that sort of thing, and how does day mm-hmm. one actually look? Mm-hmm. And all the prep, I guess, that goes into it that maybe some managers would dread, but has to be done so that people feel like they're part of something and that they genuinely are set up to do well. The induction then obviously is the next part of that where you'd maybe go into more formal training and structure like that. But to me, I may have a different definition to other people, but the onboarding bit is that kind of first day, first week, how are we structuring it so people feel welcome? Yeah, no, absolutely. Because I think sometimes people think, you know, as soon as they walk through the front door, that's it. They yeah. can relax then, you know, <laughs> yeah. the sort of pre-onboarding process is done. Yeah. But it's not, is it? No, it goes absolutely beyond that. not. No. And I think um, I did bring some stats with me. Oh, got, please share. love a stat. I love a stat as well. Please share. <laughs> and um, I was quite surprised by these. I knew that onboarding would be a big deal because yeah. we know first impressions count mm-hmm. and so that is your first impression of your business is yeah. how do people feel when they join because if you can't make them feel special then yeah i don't know when they're going to be made to feel yeah. special again so here's some fun stats for you and um, the brandon hall group found that businesses with strong onboarding process improve their new hire retention by 82 percent and particularly in recruitment holding on to people and holding on to really good people is very difficult. So anything that's going to help you set that up for success and make sure that you get to keep those people in the business mm-hmm. is really important. And onboarding accounts for, well, 82% of that. Wow. And what I've seen time and time again is when, and we can get into like details of you know what a bad onboarding process looks like versus a good one, but I've seen the painfulness that is you go through a whole hiring journey Mm -hmm. you find someone really really great with loads of potential and then you bring them in whether they're junior or experienced and then something isn't quite where it needs to be in terms of lot that's onboarding induction they don't feel invested in they don't feel like they're set up to perform not nurtured not supported and then you lose them yeah i think on average it's something like 4k for a hire yeah. So you've lost that money. Yeah. You now have to do the rehiring. Yeah. Go through that all again, which is time, which yeah. is money. Yeah. And the other part of that is that you will find it very difficult to scale because if you're constantly just replacing people, you're not growing people to bring in more revenue. Yeah. So you're not growing your teams, you're just replacing people. Yeah. So it's very difficult to scale like that. So actually this onboarding piece is so much more important, I think, than we oh, initially realised. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And thank you for sharing those stats yeah. as well with us. I have more. They may come up. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so what do you think are the common pitfalls in onboarding? What's that saying? Fail to prepare, prepare to fail? Yeah. Yeah, it's prep. <laughs> the amount yeah. of people who, and it's no fault of their own, right? Mm-hmm. Managers have got, they say, and I agree, the hardest job in recruitment is being a billing manager yeah. because mm-hmm. you are billing and you're managing, mm. and you go do the two in a day where yeah, no, you probably don't have as much time as you want. 
Then you find out, right, I can hire, yay. And then you need to actually do the hiring. You may be lucky to have support from mm. someone like yourself in a mm. business like Hoop. Mm. Lots of places, they wouldn't have that support yeah. and they maybe have to do that themselves. And then you're like, great, I found someone. And now you have to put a plan together. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and so yeah. for a lot of managers, it's just a headache. It's like, mm. a, oh, gosh, what did I do for the last person? Let me look through my emails. What calendar invites did I send? And then you end yeah. up with this piecemeal, like, onboarding thing. That's, it's the best intentions are there. Yeah. You just don't have the time. Yeah. So I say, if you can plan, have a plan and a structure, and that's what we've been building, yes. is to make sure everyone gets a consistent experience, yeah. a fair experience, one where they really, really feel part of the culture. Yeah. They get to meet people. They just get to know how things work, really simple things. And I'll give you an example. So when I worked somewhere else, um, we had this situation where someone joined and the simplest thing was that particular person in this particular office, they didn't know where to go for lunch. And I I don't know if it was like an oversight of the manager to to Mm -hmm. mention something so small. Um, That team on that lunch day, I, I wasn't in the office that day, but they... Um, that person was left on their own to kind of figure out what they wanted to do. They were local to the area, so it's probably just an oversight. But by the end of the week, that person had left. And I don't think it's because they didn't have somebody to go on lunch with, but it was very clear that that person didn't gel. Didn't feel part of the culture, did they? No. No. So after that, Mm. some of the feedback was, like, Mm. I just kind of felt like I was on my own and it didn't feel like the right place for me to work. And so I thought that was really disappointing. So we actually built in then to induction that every new start would get a buddy. Yeah. That buddy would be allocated a certain amount of expenses just on day one to take them for lunch. Yeah. If if the team could go, great. If the manager could go, great. But just something that was a little bit more like, let's make sure you don't feel alone and awkward. Yeah. You know, those first day of school vibes. Yeah, absolutely. Just something so simple that you wouldn't think of even putting on an induction plan. But it's those little, like, nuanced things when you start somewhere. If you think, like, what would make me feel really uncomfortable if I was starting somewhere new today? They're the things you want to avoid. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And, um, you know, we've been doing that for the past couple of months now. Yeah. Lunch with a buddy and it's worked really, really well. Yeah. And like I say, it's just little things because exactly. everyone remembers their first day at work, don't they? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it should be special, shouldn't it? Definitely. And I've seen this time and time again that it would depend on the team you go into, how long you may last somewhere. Okay. So mm-hmm. what we've been doing here at Hoop, obviously, is making sure that there's consistency across the teams. Yes. With divisional specific mm flair if it needs it because you know they work differently sometimes but you wouldn't join another team and have a completely different experience whereas in like some of the bigger recruitment agencies that's easily done because you join with a certain person it can really dictate what you experience so again Mm -hmm. the the bad in quotation marks would be when there isn't that consistent structure and it's left to chance. Yes, yeah. Because everybody would be like, yeah, you'll do training on this and you'll do training on that and you'll meet with this person, you'll meet with that person, but where is that outlined? Yeah. Because you could have a really great manager who's really thought that all through. You may be fortunate enough to have, you know, learning and development teams, Mm -hmm. HR teams who build that whole structure out. If you don't, it could just be like, hey, welcome, here's your desk. Yeah. This is your list. This is the system. And, you know, we'll meet that team later and that's it. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you know, going back to some of our projects, Mm. you know, we've just done the one for education now. We've done that a big overhaul, haven't we? Mm. And um, again, we've had a few new starters in the education division and feedback wise, they've thoroughly enjoyed their inductions. Again, it's that consistency. Mm. It's having that structure. I think people need that when they first join. Yeah. Whether or not they're experienced or not, I think they still need it. Yeah. Don't they? For sure. And then you can make it up fun with, you know, other things. Like, um, I remember I used to do a guess who networking yeah. task. Yeah. So I'd get a specific fact from everyone in the office. It'd be yeah. really random. And then to get people engaged with each other and to get people networking, which is a recruitment skill. Yeah, So absolutely. it's just practicing that. Yeah. And to meet the teams, they would have to get up and wander throughout that first day or two days yeah. and fill out the sheet of who is each fact relating to. Yeah. I think that's so fun. Yeah, things like that that's are really, really great. Nice. Um, yeah. And then I think where you can, bringing people on together. Yeah. So depending on the size of the recruitment business, it isn't always possible. Yeah. But you've probably seen in the last couple of weeks when you've had 
quite a few eyes on education yes. having numbers join at the same time yeah. it's nicer for them too I think absolutely yeah absolutely. people tend to feel like if you're on your own you they don't feel like they've got a benchmark of how am I performing yeah which can go either way yeah because yeah, if, sure. yeah. if you come in and then you're not doing as well as the other person who's joined you can feel a little bit like oh gosh am I doing okay and the other way around you know if you're doing really well that can be a confidence boost but that's another story but yeah if you can plan out your hiring so that you say right these are the dates Mm -hmm. if you have talent acquisition as well internally you can say right these will be the next onboarding dates even if it's two people it just adds an extra layer of comfortability I think when you're starting somewhere new and someone who can be in training with you yeah have coaching with you catch up with your manager you know together and separately but yeah that can help yeah um, also not knowing what is expected of you. Yes. I, in the L&D roles that I used to hold, I used to, it's not a joke, but I used to joke that I was people's safe space. Yeah. And people would come for training and then that would turn into coaching and that, mm-hmm. and that would sometimes turn into people saying like, oh, I just don't know how I'm doing. I yeah. just don't know if I'm doing yeah. well. Yeah. And I say, well, have you spoken to your manager? And they're like, yeah, but they don't really say anything. Okay. So I'm like, you have to tell people how are you doing? That's going to be difficult in the onboarding phase. That's like week sure. one, week two. That's going to come, you know, further within the month. Mm-hmm. But there are going to be things that you notice as a manager in someone's first week as to are they having a good week or not. Mm-hmm. And I would be capturing the things that they are or are not doing well in that week and making sure that they end what good looks like. So when we've built out now this onboarding structure, a hoop, it's not just on Monday you're going to do this and for the you know first half of the next day you're going to do that. There's also clear expectations on what should you be doing in terms of activity. Yeah. What does performance look like? Because if you don't have that as a guide, like like anything, if I got in my car and I was you know trying to get somewhere, if I didn't have if I didn't know where I was going, I couldn't get there. Mm. So I yeah. would like to know, join in somewhere like Hoop. If I want to be a senior consultant in the next six months, I would need to be billing this much. And yeah. if that's what I need to do, then I need to work my ratios and that activity back mm-hmm. to know, okay, well, even in month one, what does that look like? So yeah. that I can hit those goals for yeah. promotion and commission and you know revenue. But a lot of the time we assume that someone will know what is needed of them. Because we're like, yes, you know, recruitment, you're going to make calls, you're going to do this, you're going to do that. There's the KPIs. But also, lots of the time, we don't tell people why. Yeah. So if you're really hiring important. experienced hires, they will know why, yeah. hopefully. Yeah. If you're hiring junior people, it's not always clear that we think it is, because we know it. It's not clear, well, why have I got to do this many calls? Why have I got to, you know, track this thing in the system? What does that give me? And people then get into bad habits. And this is yeah. all started from day one. Yeah. So yeah. if you yeah. can get people using the system right, tracking things right, understanding why I've got to make this many calls because that turns into this much in terms of jobs, revenue, placements, whatever, it all pieces together. And I always just use the analogy of like jigsaw. Yeah. Because when I was training, people would get to about, I don't know, month three and they'd be like, ah. Oh, I get it. Like the yeah. I see now that leads Penny to this. Yeah. Yeah. It all starts to fit in, doesn't yeah. it? Yeah. Mm. Yeah. So there's definitely those sorts of things. And then there's also, um, yeah, I love a bit of psychology. So you've got like your psychological contract. So yeah. when you've done this fantastic jobs as salespeople that we are saying, come work a hoop, come work here, come work there, wherever your agency is. And then you bring people on. And if it's not aligned to all the wonderful things you shared it was gonna be then you're going to lose people as well. Yeah, absolutely. So how do you then make sure that your onboarding matches the experience that you've promised yeah. whilst they've been coming through the journey? Yeah, yeah. Well, that brings me on to the next point about what good onboarding looks mm-hmm. like. Just a few little bullet points yeah. about you know, what people should really be focusing on. Yeah. Um, you know, because a lot of people, I suppose, don't have a lot of time maybe to put put it together you know if they've got a you know they, they've accepted an offer on a Friday and they're yeah. starting on a Monday you know what are the essentials I suppose yeah I would um definitely have a bit of a spreadsheet I do have an onboarding checklist that I can share as well I if love that a helps. spreadsheet <laughs> this is what Soph and I have in common like, yeah. a newfound love for spreadsheets love a spreadsheet and if you don't love a spreadsheet you can just have a word document can't you you don't yeah. have to have a spreadsheet but if you like us and love a spreadsheet then mapping out you know what is going to happen on each day and do this by division because this is where it may change so yes, yeah. Things that I would suggest what we've done with education is there's time scheduled through the week for A, having a later start on the yeah. first day, just yeah. as a bit of a, you know, 
have a bit of a you know a treat on us for your first yeah. day well, we, we do that don't we so yeah. our new starters start at 10 o'clock I think you know just for the individuals to have those catch-ups make sure everything yes. is ready in place you know just so we can go you know pretty quickly into that process as soon yeah. as they arrive yeah. exactly mm. yeah that prep again you've got time in case yes. anything's gone wrong um so we've got meet the team time We've got meeting with you as part of like HR. Yep. We've got an mm-hmm. L and D induction. There's systems overviews. There's meetings with the core teams like um, marketing, etc. Yep. And then you've got meeting the other divisions. And then throughout the rest of the week, something I think that's really important is having a safe space to try things. Yeah. So the rest of the week then is geared to letting people shadow. So we know the longer that you let someone jump on the phone, the more people, if they're not familiar with that, it's going to build up in their heads and yeah, they're going to start to get scared yeah. of the phone. So we aim to get that done in week one as early as possible. Okay. But knowing that you've got clients and candidates on the other end of that phone, mm-hmm. so we want to make sure that they're cared for too Absolutely. and don't get a bad experience. Yeah. So what we've built in now is shadowing opportunities. Yes. So that people yes. can listen to each other on the phones first, hear what good looks like. That's supplemented then with training. There are, um, or there will be, <laughs> sheets that will be prompts for people so they understand what that will look like. And built into that week is call coaching. So the yes. managers will listen in yes. and be able to give real-time feedback as to these are the areas you can specifically improve on. Or they know what a success rate looks like in that team even. Yeah. So that they're not like, oh, I'm rubbish. It's like, okay, that was my third no of the day or whatever, but that's okay because statistically, you know, it takes yeah. me four calls to get a yes. Yeah. Not but three. you know, everyone's been there, haven't they? Yeah. You know, it is always daunting to be on the phone, you know, especially for us, you know, we've got a big open plan office. And, yeah. you know, sometimes you do feel for the newer stars, you think, oh gosh, the office is really quiet and they're having to get on the phone. But you know what? It just becomes the norm, doesn't mm-hmm. it, for everybody in the end? Yeah, it does. So yeah, I'd probably summarise those in like six steps. So first is setting those clear expectations. Yeah. What is expected of someone? What are their performance criteria? So it's very clear. Am I performing against those or not? And I would be carrying that through for their whole time with you. Because um, again, I'm sure I know here you've got monthly performance reviews, etc. Yes, so it's yes, very do, yeah. transparent mm-hmm. as to how am I tracking against yeah. a promotion or mm-hmm. you know that sort of thing. Um, then ensuring that they feel part of a team from day one, that lunch buddy Absolutely. program that you mentioned. Yep. Sitting with a team. I had a manager here ask me, you know, who do you think I should sit where? And I think that's a great question because yeah, yeah, that yeah, that will, yeah. you know, support their development. That actually leads into something else, which we won't probably get onto today, but how you maybe support people hybrid and remote as well yeah, when they're yeah, new. Because yeah. one of the biggest things, I think, and one of the best reasons to be in the office, if you can, is just the conversations and stuff you hear across the desk. Absolutely. It's very Absolutely. difficult to replicate. You don't realise how much you do take in yeah. just from listening to people's For conversations sure. and Absolutely. listen to the work style. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, The third one, that kind of psychological contract that we mentioned, just making sure that whatever's been sold and promised throughout the hiring journey is given. And from the applicant, you know, when they come in and they're a new hire, if they've promised this, this and this, it should be a two-way thing that you're enabling them to be all of the things that they said and you deliver on them too. 100%. Um, Then you've got your onboarding and induction plan. So onboarding naturally leads into induction. So I've typically put together a 12-week induction. I think that's quite a nice length of time spacing out, you know, right, what does somebody need to know and when do they need to know it? Something I tried, which was quite interesting, was I flipped around in one of the businesses I worked with whether we did business development training first or candidate training first. Okay. And the results of this little trial were that whatever you started training with first you were more comfortable with is that right okay, yeah that's I'm not saying it's scientific okay. it wasn't you know <laughs> it wasn't particularly oh. but I just trialed it in one of our London offices and yeah. if people were trained on the client side first they were much more comfortable with client calls than candidate calls that's interesting it's just funny isn't that okay that is um so thinking about you know how does that program look how long is it going to be have you got training booked in there have you got shadowing opportunities have you got coaching scheduled have you got then role specific activities because one of the big big things in learning now is learning in the flow of work of course yeah so back at reed you'd be three days in the cotswolds in the manor 
really intense days of training, mm. which were great yeah. and I loved them. Yeah. Now you would have your training days and we've done some classroom training, yeah? Mm-hmm. But what can people do on the desk in the moment rather than away from the desk? Because the more that people can practice at the desk, doing the work, doing putting things into practice, the more opportunity they get to try, maybe to fail, to succeed and to learn. Yeah. And it's not until, you know, I've had people do role plays with me and they've smashed them out the park. Yeah. And then I'd call the manager and I'd be like, oh my gosh, they were fantastic. Like, yeah. how are they getting on in branch? They can't pick up the phone. Okay. So yeah. it's like the more you can do at the desk side, the more real it is. Yeah, no, absolutely. Yeah, and role play is going to be difficult. People can feel a bit, you know, yeah. like they're not real. And, yeah, no, you know, no. They can yeah. be a bit awkward. So <laughs> I definitely have them, but do what you can at the desk. Um, point five then. I would say the point five and six maybe go together. So five would be having ongoing feedback and support. So knowing somebody doesn't get to the end of week one and they're done. Someone doesn't get to the end of week 12 and now you don't have to support them anymore. That learning, training, support, coaching should be completely ongoing and they should Always. have a plan for that. Yes, yes. Um, and point six with that then is kind of doing your performance checks. And one thing maybe I haven't mentioned is when I said plan and prepare something that's worked really well with some of the startups that I've worked with is as a manager figuring out, you know, who are the clients that this this consultant can come in and talk to that's mm-hmm. maybe going to be a little bit warmer than some of the cold calls they have. Okay. Who are some of the candidates that we can map out already that they can have some conversations with? What are some of the jobs that they can start working on straight away so that that builds up the confidence for that person? Mm-hmm that they can get stuck in straight away. Because if you come into a desk that's quite cold and there's not much business on it, that's really difficult. And so you're not getting the chance to practice things if maybe that kind of generated, this is my plan for you, isn't there. So having that is really great too. Yeah. Oh no, thank you so much for sharing that with us. Of course. Um, Then just to kind of wrap up then, you know, with onboarding, sometimes you get, you know, brand new people into recruitment mm-hmm. you know this is more recruitment specific yeah. um or people with more sort of experience behind yeah, them yeah. so what would be the difference would you say between the two yeah i think they need different programs yeah, in all absolutely. honesty yeah mm. the way that i did it when i was at a company called hamlin williams was we had primarily juniors being brought on okay. so a lot of our induction focused on junior hires yeah and it was all set up in the way to do so then ad hoc he mm-hmm. would bring on the the odd experience tire and so I was very mindful that we didn't have the bandwidth to give them their own induction because it would be like one every maybe three months or something but they definitely still need a training yeah and if you bring on an experienced tire here they need to know the hoop way absolutely you know yeah. we all have you know different systems our different yep. ways of doing things the reason why we're different exactly. in general isn't it yeah, yeah exactly sure. so I think it's Taking what they've come with, harnessing it, but then sharing with them, this is the way that it is when you work here. So you want to build out your onboarding. I use the junior guide as a basis and then just pull out what they wouldn't need. And then replace it with stuff that's more of a higher level. So one thing that I built was this tool, just a spreadsheet. (laughs) Love a spreadsheet. <laughs> <laughs> Where um, I set it up so that you can write down, here's all the things that somebody needs to do as mm-hmm. a you know top performer, top biller, whatever it is in this particular role. Then they rate themselves as an experienced hire against those things. So it could yeah. be, you know, this is how comfortable I am with sourcing, calling clients, account management, all of that sort of stuff. Then the manager can also give a rating. And then the, um, the spreadsheet will populate a visual okay. of... These are the areas that they rate themselves the highest and the lowest. And then you can just use that as a guide for, okay, these seem to be the lower areas. This is where we're going to focus with you on your development. I think that's really, really helpful. Tailor the whole journey for them. Yeah. 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 So you will have your, this is what you need to know our way and this is mandatory. Yeah. And then this based on where you are at is what we suggest that you have. So you almost have like a personalized development plan. Yeah, no, that's 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 a great idea. I think that's absolutely fantastic. Yeah. And I know we've looked at that before. Yeah. Um one thing I would just add. Yeah, of course, is that please. It is really great as well. If you like I said, bringing people on together in cohorts. Yeah. If you bring on experienced hires and new junior consultants, which I know you have recently in yes, education. We have. Yes, yeah. When you run training and coaching with them together, mm. The experience higher can add so much value yes, as well yeah, on, yeah. you know, this is what I've experienced in real life and they can bring out some of the 
the real life examples that it doesn't just lead the manager to say it or doesn't just have the trainer say it but that person can contribute and then on the flip side because it's so fresh to a junior they often say things that refresh the minds of a experienced yeah, hire. Like, yeah, no, that's oh my gosh, yeah, I forgot yeah. about that. So yeah. yeah, bringing those groups together, if you've got them, can really help. Okay, amazing. So for anyone who's listening in today, if they're um, thinking, oh gosh, you know, I've got a, a new starter and I'm struggling to put this onboarding process together, where would be a good place to start? Hmm. This is a very good question. And if you were struggling... I get it, first of all. (laughs) It can be really hard and it can be really difficult, especially if you have multiple divisions, if you've got like back office and ops and like internal inductions and onboarding to do too because they're going to be completely different. Yeah, yeah, they are. So just know you're doing well to start this. But I would say, what are the deliverables of the role that this person's been brought in to do. That's where you start. So you'll know this hopefully because you would have gone through your hiring process to, you know, with clear outlines of this is what's expected of someone in this role. So I would build the induction and the onboarding plan around that. So in, you know, if you're onboarding, you say, right, okay, this is what week week one looks like. And then it goes into, you know, say a 12 week induction or eight week, whatever you want it to be. I would think what at the end of that amount of time should someone be able to do so by the end of week one they would have had a great week success looks like this 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 this, isn't this so have they got on the phone have they met everyone in the team are they familiar with the the evp of the business yeah are they aware of all the policies that they need to know have they been set up on the system in the way that they should be can Mm. they track on the crm do they know exactly how to use what they need to use in week one because they don't need to know it all now that's another thing systems training sometimes you just give it everybody everything and you know I never really this may be me thinking bad of people but I've never given people the training on how to put a placement on Mm -hmm. in week one yeah it's the basics because people don't need that yet unless they've had a smashing week in which case you can give it but just think bite size everything now is bite size so what do they need to know by the end of week one two three four however long you want that to go And then, okay, work back from there. What activities would someone need to do this week to do that? Okay, great. Work back from there. If somebody needs to, um, I don't know, have a a client call by the end of week one, well, what opportunities have they got to learn about what a client call sounds like in your business? Where are the practice opportunities, the shadowing opportunities, the opportunity to actually pick up the phone, to be coached, and then work it back from there? Yeah. So yeah, yeah, I I think if you have a performance mindset with these sorts of things, know what great looks like. We won't say good, we'll say great. (laughs) What does success look like for someone at the end of these weeks? And then just work all of the activity back from there because then you avoid putting in these ad hoc niceties as well, which we want, you know, Mm. we want like the lunch buddy and we want the, you know, the nice stuff, but we also want people to be set up for success in terms of generating revenue from day one. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. Oh, look, so thank you so much thank for you. all of this. I could sit here and talk to you all day about onboarding and inductions. <laughs> um, but look, you know, you're, you're a fountain of knowledge. Um, and I'm sure you've shared quite a bit now with our audience. And Thank you. Know, you. Thank yeah. you for letting me have the channel to do that on because uh, it's so great to work with you at Hoop and just so great to share these things to help people get this right because it really is the difference between scaling and not. Oh, 100%. No, no, it really, really is. Well, again, thank you so much for taking time out of your busy schedule. (laughs) You too. (laughs) Um, So for anyone who wants to get in touch with Sophie, you're on several different platforms, aren't you, Sophie? I am. Do you want to go? I am, yeah, thanks. (laughs) Uh, So yeah, I'm on LinkedIn, so you can connect with me there. STM Consultancy is also on LinkedIn. Our website is stmconsultancy.co. And then, very excitingly, we've just launched our new newsletter called The Huddle. Um, which launched last week. So if anybody wants to come join that, I literally share all the tools, tips and techniques from People Operations to help people build dream teams and boost profits. And actually in our last issue of the huddle, I actually attached a free onboarding checklist for everybody. So it literally goes through everything we've just talked about so that managers, if they did feel overwhelmed, they could literally just go through this and go tick, 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 tick. Oh, that is such a useful tool. I know. Oh, fantastic. <laughs> no, people have been asking for it for a while, so I thought I'd put that together. So if you do want that, that is stmconsultancy.co forward slash onboarding checklist.
Well, again, thank you to everyone for tuning in today. Um, You'll find us on Spotify. And um, yeah, we'll see you next time for episode eight. Thank you. (laughs) 